As I make more and more videos, it became apparent that I have a need for a monitor to see what the heck I'm filming. Main camera is the Sony a7 III and it lacks a flip out monitor. And as a solo creator, I often have to guess my framing and also pray that I'm in focus at the mercy of the Sony autofocusing system, which is very solid. Now my budget is under $150 and based on my research on Amazon, I have three different options. Number one is the Field World FW568. The second one is the Port Keys PT5 Mark II. And the third option is the OCT5 Plus. Just to let you guys know, all of these products are listed under my affiliate links in the description below. If you're interested in any of these products, feel free to support my channel, appreciate it. Right off the bat, I've excluded the Fuel World, not because it's a bad monitor. In fact, for $125, it's an excellent monitor with video features that are on par with the other two contenders. However, I can't help but feel like the Fuel World monitor is just missing that niche factor that the other two are offering. Port Keys has a touchscreen navigation while the OCT5 Plus is equipped with a bright 1000 nit screen. Sadly, the Field World has neither. My choices are now down to the port key or the OCT5 Plus, given both monitors are very similar in price, features, screen size, and video functionality. The real question I wanna answer today is whether or not I need a touchscreen more or a brighter screen for my personal use case. Let me walk you through my train of thoughts and my decision making process. And if you find this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Starting with build quality, when you're comparing the two monitors, it's obvious that the port key wins in this category. Both monitors are made out of hard plastic, but the port keys is just built a little bit more solid with better attention to details. The port keys has small cutout holes to help dissipate heat when you're using it for extended period of time. The build quality also extends to the accessories such as the sunshade. It comes with two side mounting brackets. The sunshade can be easily popped on using the plastic grommets on the side. On the other hand, the OCT5 Plus feels a little bit plasticky. There's not a lot of cutout for heat dissipation and the plastic just seems a little bit cheaper. Portability wise, they're about the same between two monitors. The Port Key sports a five inch monitor while the OC has a five and a half inch monitor. And here's an example of what it looks like with the monitor fitting into my camera backpack. So this is the Port Key PT5 Mark II, very small monitor. And then the OCT5 Plus is slightly bigger and also the bracket adds a little bit more bulk to it, but it's still very small. As you can see, I can still close my backpack, no problem here. Both monitors are the same weight, but the OCT5 Plus is just slightly longer in length due to the larger screen. Surprisingly, width and thickness wise is about the same when the NP battery is mounted. When it comes to power options, both monitors can be powered using the Sony NP batteries or the Canon LP batteries. Now I like that a lot because these batteries are cheap, you can find them anywhere and they last forever. One thing I like about the OCT5 Plus in this category is the fact that you can power the monitor through USB-C. The port key does have a DC input jack, also a five volt USB type A input and output combo jack. But I don't know about you, but everything I own uses USB-C. So therefore in this category, I have to give it to the OCT5 Plus. Feature wise, they are both about the same with standard video tools such as focus peaking, waveform, histogram, false color, vector scope, zebra, anamorphic D squeeze, and much, much more. Both monitors have built in camera looks to help you preview flat picture profiles such as Sony's s Log 3. Now you can also load in your personal custom LUDs using a USB drive on the port keys and also via an SD card on the OCT5 Plus. An interesting observation is that both monitors seem to only support memory devices that's 32 gig or less. I initially popped in a 64 gig and kept on getting error messages until I downsized. The biggest selling point on the port key PT5 Mark II is the touchscreen. The UI was designed quite well and even as a brand new user, it was intuitive enough to navigate. The touchscreen display itself is clear, it's sensitive, and it felt very similar to my cell phone. On the other hand, the OCT5 Plus relies on a single joystick to navigate through the manual system. It is a little clunky at first, but after 10 minutes, you get used to it. Although I will still occasionally click on the wrong screen once in a while. In the user interface category, port key wins for sure. When it comes to media input and output, the port key wins again. Because not only does it support 4K30 input, it also allows 4K30 output. The OCT5 Plus is input only at max resolution at 4K30 or 1080p 60 frames. 
Both screens are 1080p Full HD, but the OCT5 Plus shines, pun intended, is the brightness of the screen. The T5 Plus rocks a 1000 nit screen while the port key is only at 500. The screen brightness comes in clutch when you're shooting under direct sunlight. But if you're shooting indoor or if you're in the shade, you should have no problem seeing both screens. Although you'll be likely using the sunshade a lot more with the port keys, in this category, OC wins. Summarizing what we have so far, the OC T5 Plus has a bigger monitor, but a clunkier user interface. On the other hand, Portkey has a slightly smaller screen and also an intuitive touchscreen user interface with the option to output to 4K via HDMI. Now, I honestly struggle to decide which monitor to keep, but at the end, I'm going to keep the Portkey's PT5 Mark II based on the following reasons. Number one, I mainly use this monitor in my indoor studio anyways, so the screen brightness is not my top priority. If I were to use this outdoor, I'll just need to suck it up and use the sunshade. Number two, I like the HDMI output on the Port Keys PT5 Mark II, as it gives me more options to output to a recorder if I ever need it. It's more about future-proving myself. And number three, I'm not gonna lie, I like the touchscreen interface a lot more than the joystick navigation on the OC. The touchscreen is just that much more intuitive and easier to navigate for me. Well, I'm very glad that we did this exercise together because initially I was seriously leaning towards the OC, but after weighing the pros and cons, I've changed my mind. I am willing to sacrifice the brighter screen in return for a better user interface, solid build quality, and future proving. Not to mention a save a whopping $20 to buy another battery or a longer HDMI cable. Just to let you guys know, the included cables with both monitors are just way too short. At a $125 price point, I know I can't have it all, but the Portkey's PT5 Mark II came pretty close, at least for now. I hope you find this video helpful. If you do, hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.